on everyone and welcome to my first ever rose modeling tutorial video. Uh, it's a beautiful snowy day out here in Nebraska and I thought today would be a good day to uh, take a look at uh, how I do um, my, uh, my rose modeling and uh, yeah just do some recording of it and show you guys um, how I do it. I do consider myself very uh, new to the whole rose modeling a form of artwork so any professional rose mallers out there who who watch this I mean I'm sure you could pick out some mistakes that I do or some things I might do differently but I am still learning so um, hopefully that'll come with practice so yeah feel free to uh, grab a cup of coffee and or some paint supplies if you want to paint along with me and let's get started okay so I thought for my first tutorial video I would start with a pretty simple project so uh, we're going to go ahead and paint this breadboard today, just a really flat, simple surface. And uh, the supplies you're going to need are a sheet of uh, tracing paper, a pencil, some graphite paper. You're also going to want a roll of paper towel and a jar of clean water for rinsing your brushes. Uh, you're going to want an assortment of brushes. Um, I'm going to be using acrylic paints today. I've also got my assortment of paints. Uh, so because I'll be using acrylic paints, I have uh, brushes for um, acrylic paint. Uh, you're also going to want some embossing tools. I found these are really great for uh, transferring designs uh, from the tracing paper through the graphite paper onto a surface. Uh, you'll see me do that also in this video. And uh, they're also great for adding um, dots onto your artwork because of the, um, the tip they have there. The camera's having a hard time focusing. There we go. Uh, yeah, so um, the ball tip on it is great for adding really consistent dots onto whatever um, it is you're doing. I'll also be showing you that as well. And then uh, you'll also want some sort of palette for your paints. I have here um, a book of palette paper that I'll be using. And of course, last but not least, you're going to want something to uh, cover up your workspace in case anything gets a bit messy. Um, yeah, so with that, uh, let's get into it. The first step in doing our rose modeling is we're going to need a pattern for our design. For something like this breadboard, a really flat, simple surface, we can just uh, go ahead and begin by tracing the outline of it on a piece of tracing paper. Now that we have our outline, we're going to go ahead and do the details of our design. Uh, for rose modeling patterns, you can find them in rose modeling pattern books, or you can also find them online. For this one, I'm going to actually do, be doing one of my own, inspired by the Hollingdahl rose modeling style. Hollingdahl is a very uh, elegant, very symmetrical style of rose modeling, and definitely one of my favorites, so we're going to give that a go today. So as I've been sketching my pattern here, you'll notice that I've folded the uh, tracing paper in several places. Uh, this will help to gauge more accurately where like the center of the breadboard is for centering our design. And it will also come in handy when we want to make the design more symmetrical. Uh, because since we have the tracing paper, we can just fold it over this way and we can mirror one half of the image directly onto the other side. So there you can see that it is a pretty symmetrical design and we can just keep on doing the uh, fold over technique as we add more elements to it and we'll have a really nice symmetrical design even as we're doing this freehand. When sketching out your own design, you also don't have to worry about being super detailed about it because as we put on um, our first coats of paint, a lot of these elements are going to be painted over anyway, so it'll be later that we'll add all the fine details. A lot of the pattern here is just to get the basic shape, and so we can see the general layout of where it's going to be on our piece.
right, now that we have our pattern all drawn up, it's time to get the breadboard ready for getting the pattern onto it. So we need to start with our base coat on the breadboard. So we're gonna go ahead and use a background color of deep midnight blue. So for adding this first base coat, you're going to want to have your jar of clean water at the ready as well as a bit of paper towel for your brush. And so we're going to take a rather larger brush here and uh, we're just going to get it, the bristles a little bit wet. Um, not too wet though, we're going to get some of the excess water off with the paper towel here, just dab it on there. Then uh, we're going to load up our brush with some of the, uh, the blue paint and then we're going to go ahead and apply it to the breadboard. Now you want to make sure when applying it that you want to keep on painting in the same direction. So if you start painting up and down, you want to keep on going up and down. This will help your painting to keep a smooth grain and really give it a solid look by the end. Now that our background is done, then we can go ahead and transfer the pattern onto the piece. Uh, we're going to do this by placing the graphite paper onto it. Make sure it's the correct side of the graphite paper that's down, otherwise uh, your pattern will not transfer. Um, once you have that all set and ready, then you can put your pattern on top of that, lining it up with the piece. And then this is where you're going to want to take your embossing tools. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, these are really great for transferring patterns. All you do is use it to trace back over your pattern while pressing down firmly, and that will cause the graphite paper to transfer the pattern onto the surface you're working with. Now that we have our pattern transferred, we're going to go ahead and start painting it. Uh, like how you did with the base coat, you're going to want to take a brush, uh, dip it in the water, and then get rid of some of the excess moisture with the paper towel. And then I like to start with lighter colors and work my way gradually towards the darker when I can. So we're going to go ahead and start with uh, the white here and put it onto these petals. As we move on to painting some of the yellow shapes here, I also want to take this moment to let you know that uh, there's nothing wrong with playing around a little bit when you're painting a piece to see uh, which way to hold it is better for getting the best stroke work that you can. A stroke work is something that takes quite a while to master, so um, like I said, I'm still learning my rose mauling, so. Um, but yeah, definitely play around with positioning it to see what feels uh, best, most natural, and gives you the best stroke uh, position. Don't feel like you always have to have the piece um, up and down or side to side or whatever. Just uh, do what, what feels best and what gives you the best results. color in a light to dark is going to be a light green which we're going to go ahead and apply to the base of the leaf shapes.
Finally, for the base colors for our pattern, we're going to add a bit of light blue and then a bit of red. For this piece of rose modeling, we're going to go ahead and do some shading with it because I love how the shading can really make the piece come alive, really make it pop. So we're going to go ahead and start with the uh, blue scrolling patterns and how we're going to do that is I'm going to double load the brush with adding a medium coat of a light blue and then adding some white on the corner of the brush there. So we're going to begin shading our piece by starting with the uh, the highlights, the lighter values of the colors. So how you're going to do that is you're going to set your brush down and just drag it across where you want that highlight to appear. And if you have enough practice and good enough technique, it should come out as a really nice gradient. I'm still working on getting my gradient down really well, but uh, yeah, that's the basic idea of it. And I found when working with a double loading a brush like that, you're pretty much gonna always want to give your brush a rinse and reload it after uh, each time you apply it to the piece. So that way you don't have a whole bunch of colors always running together. You wanna try to keep them as d distinct um, so that they're eye catching and don't just blend together. Similar to how we used white for the lighter values for the blues, we're going to go ahead and use yellow to bring out the lighter values of the green shapes. Then we're going to load up our brush again with some of the white in order to get the highlights for the yellow shapes. dark blue space we actually want it to be more part of the pattern as opposed to the background so we're going to go ahead and give it a highlight using some of the light blue from earlier. also add a little touch of highlights to things like the insides of the flowers by just adding a little bit of white to them. Now that we have the highlights done, we can go ahead and begin with the shadow values. So we're going to go ahead and start with the green and give it a shadow by adding a dark green.
for giving shadows to the yellow colors, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of burnt sienna. And of course for the blue, we're just going to add a little bit of a dark blue. Now that our shading is done, we're going to add some of the finishing touches to this piece. To do this, you're going to want a really fine tip brush, and you're going to start with some white on your brush. And it's at this point that you can really kind of start to improvise a bit with the finishing touches that you want on the piece. You can do things like teardrop shapes, dots, swirls. Um, yeah, just have a lot of fun with it. Have fun accenting it and uh, really making the piece pop. If you want to add some really great dots to your work, this is when you're going to want to take your embossing tool for this job. And uh, you're going to go ahead and dip the point of it into the paint so you get a nice little dab ball of paint at the end, like that. And if you want to get a nice row of dots, you're just going to go ahead and touch it to the surface and move it along the line where you want the dots to go. And you might notice that the dots gradually decrease in size as you do this. Uh, it's a really nice technique for getting that really great look. Uh, that's because the paint gradually, you know, comes off as you do it. So uh, yeah, it'll gradually get smaller and smaller. And yeah, it's just a really nice fun technique and I love applying dots that way on a piece. Cross hatching is also a really nice way to use space in uh, certain styles of rose modeling. So we're going to go ahead and apply it here too.
in addition to adding the white accents, we can also go ahead and add in some black ones. I really like how this adds uh, contrast to the piece while also kind of bringing everything together. I think we'll call it good and we have our rose mauling breadboard. it for today's video. I hope you guys had fun following me along on this little rose mauling project and I wish you all the best with rose mauling projects of your own and I'm sure I'll be seeing you again soon. Thanks!